Okay, we've got it. Everything's on. Uh, I'll turn the speed down just in case. Just start low and then take from there. Right, I think there's nothing for it but to uh, let's press up and see if it will lift it. Welcome back to the workshop. So in this video series we're trying to make a little bit more space underneath the quill so we can drill deeper parts. Now to do that we've had to strip the whole thing down and now as you can see we've got to this stage here so the ball screw's gone, the quill guide's gone, the XY table's gone. As you've probably seen in the last video that's given me the opportunity to add a motorized feature so I can move the knee up and down using this control system here. So that all works fine. So the next thing to do now is to machine these side pieces and the back plate, um, probably to take about that much off, so we can take advantage and lower this all the way down and get the full travel. So as you can probably see at the moment, we've got those two carriages there that hold the back plate on. So we've got sort of four in total. So the idea is I'll cut these side pieces off somewhere about there, just underneath that fixing, but just still have enough material there. So something like that. Same on the other side, and then the back plate, also cut that at the same height, and then we'll only use one of these carriages, so this one we won't need anymore. And the idea will be then that this can drop, well, probably at 80, 90 mil lower, and that will really transform the amount of depth we've got underneath the quill. So to do that, I need to take both these triangular pieces off and then the back plate off, so I may as well take this whole table off. And then we'll mark it all out. I've got my drawings, so I know my dimensions, and we'll basically cut that all the way across there We'll start by taking the ball screw connector off here. Okay, we've got the rear plate bolted down now. Uh, I've just skimmed the bed now just to take a millimeter or two off and that's given me this datum to push it up against at this edge. Um, and then I'm just gonna screw that down. And then uh, you can see I've got, got it marked out here, but we'll pick up off this edge anyway. Uh, machine that away with a little bit to leave and then we'll come up to that line there. I think that was 100 millimeters we needed uh, on there. And then when I drop the next pieces on, um, we'll have all the coordinates set. So we'll know where we are because we're going to come back onto that datum. Right, so I'll finish screwing this down and then we'll machine it.
Okay, it's the last one done. Didn't take too long, especially once I got my datum sorted out, and then uh, I could just bring the machine back to the same coordinates. All right, let's get this unclamped, and then we'll see you at the workbench. Okay, there's our last one, cut to size. Right, well, let's start putting it all back together. I think we'll start with the back plate. Put that onto the bearings and then add these two. Right, I'll just do this up loosely because the off a little bit. Um, because when I get the table on, uh, I'm going to have to dial it in so that it's sort of flat or perpendicular uh, to the quill axis. But we'll do that a bit later, and then I can just fine tune this. But for now, just get them in. Okay, I think we'll put the side pieces on next. Okay, then I think we'll put the top on. So I'll mark T for the top. I was just wondering why I've got two fixings left over and I couldn't for the life of me work out where they went. And of course, they went in the bit I've cut off. Yeah. So there is that, yeah. Right, I've just been dialing it in left to right. So we've got pretty much zero there. zero there obviously I think it's still tipping this way but side to side looks good that took a while but we got there all right let's do front to back next oh, you can't see all the way through there but somewhere there it's about zero there corner 0.08 to be honest I've fiddled with it and I've fiddled with it and I think I'm only going to make it worse so I think we'll leave it there pretty good for a drill press I think that'd be fine obviously once we get the weight of that on it it might move a little bit anyway so who knows depends where the CAG is so I think for for this you know it's not a jig borer I think that'll be fine we'll leave it there Right, now it's together, I thought I'd give it another run up and down, just make sure it sounds okay and not strained, which probably means everything's reasonably well aligned, so... Uh, oh, down, that's the other one. And you can see at the moment I've got regular cap heads on there, I'll place those with button button head screws so get even more clearance yeah probably about there I was a bit worried we were going to get tight but that's okay probably about 10-12mm there in terms of the rail on the rail there, about another 10 mil. Okay, so there it is, and it's pretty much about the fullest position it will go down. And I'll try and fit it all in shot. And there we are, I've got the distance. Obviously, we haven't got the XY table on there, so between there 
and I'll say the bottom of the quilt. So about 370. Obviously you've got a drill bit in there, table and the vise. So the table, so if you take the vise off, I'll just work to the side. The table comes up to here, 140. So if you keep that black tape in mind, now you've got all that clearance. And then the top of the vise, so if you're working in the vise, comes to that piece of tape there. You've got that clearance there. Um, my other thought was um, maybe put a dowel pin here, so come forward a bit. So something like, um, like this. I've got a load of these 6mm dowel pins. Obviously you have to grind them down a bit. That would go in, if it went in forward there, and then machine up a block, you know, say 20 mil thick, that are bolt in, and then have the pin come through from the side into that block. Uh, and obviously do that both sides. Mm, might be worrying over nothing because, you know, generally the drilling force is gonna be down through the center there, and onto the ball screw. It's just, if it does slip, and goes out of alignment, then I'm not going to be drilling straight holes anymore. Hmm. It's quite a lot of work to pin that though, just making up the block and just finding some real real estate to actually put it in. Uh, you know, obviously just putting one in the middle there is not going to do anything. I'd need two, but then the bolts are in the way that go to this carriage. So, uh, well, I don't have to decide just yet, and maybe I, I won't do it. Uh, maybe let's put the rest of it together and. Uh, yeah, let's get the rest of the quill on and do the bits and pieces first and then I'll think about it. Okay, next uh, we need to take these uh, blocks off the top because we don't need those anymore. So originally we had this one and this carriage here. They were together and they were what the knee ran up and down on. And then the top one there was just to hold the quill and for a quill guide. Obviously we're down to one carriage now, so that one will become the quill guide and then the one at the top we can take off, so that one and that one. So we just need to slide them into their plastic guides, which I've got down here. So these are the guides they originally came on. Obviously we've kept those in a little box. And so what we need to do is, I've got a little pot down here just in case the balls come out, but hopefully this will slide on there without any problems. It's a bit awkward because the quill handle's in the way, but here we go. Oh, not that one. So the, the ball system doesn't start till about here. These are just like end caps, but that will help me get it aligned. Okay, I think we're on. Yeah. There we are. These are 20 millimeter rails. All right, one down, one to go. And here's the second one. I find these cable ties are quite a nice way just to secure them. I think they originally came like shrink wrapped without cable ties and the plastic was just enough to hold them in place. Try and concentrate. Oh, it's come off. those off so the sharp edges catch me a bit later. Okay before we forget uh, we'll put the um, access plate back on again. I don't need to get in there anymore but it makes sense just to put that back on. Okay I think next we'll put the quill guide back on which has got the DRO, depth stop and all that kind of stuff and the light although I think I'm going to do something different from the light ultimately, but for now we'll just get it back on the on the machine. All right, we'll start with the uh, actual bit for the quill.
that's nice and smooth. I think I got lucky on the alignment first time. Oh, these aren't super tight, hold on. Oh, yeah. Still good. I'll put the light back in for now to sort of break it. go on will be the DRO for the quilt so there's quite a few fixings and things to all get aligned to make sure this runs nice and smoothly up and down right, that's where it seems to want to sit so let's tighten this up and then see if it runs smoothly just backed it all off, loosened it, and got it to kind of run in its neutral position. Actually, that's not great still. No. Oh, it's rubbing on there, that was why. Oh yeah, that's great. I had the lock slightly on. set. Okay I think we've got to the point where we can put the XY table back on there. Uh, I've just tightened up uh, the bolt that holds the knee onto the ball screw because obviously if that starts coming undone it will be hidden by the uh, XY table. So that's really tight now. Right, I'll film it from here so I don't kick the camera over this time. Uh, this is very heavy but um, yeah, I really should probably break it down into bits but that will take quite a while. If I can just get this one, one lift, we'll be there. Or even maybe just take the handle off. It'll just help me get in a little bit closer. All right, wish me luck. Things. Oh, <laughs> got the handle. Let's put that back on again. That would help. Okay. Move those out the way before they get caught. If you can see in shot. Oh yeah. So uh, earlier in the video, I think it was this video. Yeah, earlier in this video, um, I was talking about the need to cut this bracket back. It's just, there's nothing behind here. It just acts as a rigid support for the uh, DRO protective cable. So we'll just crop a bit out there. Then we can put the Z-axis DRO on here. So this is pretty straightforward to do. We'll do that a bit later. All right, for now, <laughs> let's see where we're at. If we're anywhere near the holes. Go all the way back. Now this cover down here just stops the swarf, or the worst of it, at least getting onto the ball screw. And I've always thought about, yeah, the thing is it's it's got a hole in it and the ball nut is trapped in there. And then there's this additional plate which slides backwards and forwards. So it's always covers, uh, you see it, yeah, the ball screw down there and the ball nut. There is a hole at the bottom of that. So any swarf that did get in there would fall out and eventually drop through into the table bit down here. Um, but because of that one piece design, it means 
at least from this side, I can't get to the fixings. Now, one of the things I thought about was cutting some, I think maybe 20 millimeter holes, because you can get a 20 millimeter plug, but they've got to be very shallow to make sure they miss the head. And when the table comes this way, so the other thing I thought about was just covering them with a bit of tape, sort of electrical tape, and then you'd peel that off and uh, bolt them in, you know, get access to the bolts. But as you probably saw when I was disassembling it, I did manage to actually just, now that's fully rearward, is just lift this up enough, line up the fixings, and to get access to these without permanently bending the plate. So I don't know, maybe we'll just go with that for now as a solution. I don't really want to cut it into two pieces because then you'll have a gap and stuff will fall down the gap. So that's where we've got to with that one. Okay. Let's do that loose for now. I'll go back to the front ones. In now. now in terms of alignment you don't really need to align anything because you've got the drill here and no matter which way the XY table is as long as they're orthogonal to each other um, you know everything works so it's really just a visual thing so I'll just align it with this front edge so it looks quite nice looks like it's in the sort of a natural position that it wants to be set for a while now this is made by bond Hus, i think that's how you pronounce it and this the red is the metric set which is what i've got they do a yellow imperial set as well so the set i've got is 10 just looking across 10 8 6 5 4 3 2 and a half and 2 and it came with a little holder that they plug into as well i think i got it for about 45 50 pound i can't remember where from it was a while ago now um they they are very good so what's nice about them is if you've got plenty of space uh, and you want to sort of spin the uh, the nuts in or out because of this T shape, you, know, you can really get a nice spin on it. Whereas, obviously, uh, you can't do that with that type. Uh, with this type, you can get in really small holes. With this, quite long, clearly you can't do that. So, uh, and it's just nice as well. Just it sounds a bit weird. Just come in the workshop and have this nice set all in a row and ready to use. And when you do need to use them, they're really nice. So. Uh, I think they come ball ended down to a certain size as well. Some around three or four millimeters, then below that they're square, probably because uh, the tip would break if they're any smaller. Anyway, you know, um, not sponsored or anything like that, but just really, you know, when you want to use something nice and quality and you can get in there, these are just a nice little tool to use. Okay, we'll do all those real ones. Uh, some washers on these bolts would have been nice, but there's really no space in the casting. You know, you a few millimeters away there so you wouldn't get any washer at the back so you'd have to well you guess you could have an odd shaped one like cut a crescent off it or something like that right, next thing we need to do is put the covers back on so one in that corner I didn't think about that. Obviously the table can now go a lot lower and the bellows were designed so they weren't too long so when it was high they didn't scrunch up too much and get in the way. I mean that will just, that's gonna rip that I think. Okay, well I think for now we'll put them on. Yeah, they're probably gonna end up pulling through there's no washers on those. I can, yeah, just about get them on. I think what we'll do, do ourselves a favour and we'll bring this down for now. 
yeah, get that on. And then I'll probably have to order some more material for this. I mean, it's got a rip in it anyway, where it caught the vice, yeah, and I was, <laughs> or caught one of the work pieces, and uh, I just ploughed through it. Yeah, let's get that on next. Ooh, that should go in there, yeah. Uh, I was also looking into different lighting options and I found one that's quite small, I think it would fit here and then a gooseneck's about 250mm so it comes about here and then I could sort of bring it out, I've got to watch the handle so it's just out of shot here but um, bring that round and angle it down and the same the other side so I think I managed to find a pair of those 12 volts, they're like for camping, caravan, sort of mobile homes and things 12 volts, uh, yeah, a pair of those for about £10, so uh, hopefully I'll be okay. I think they did black and silver, and I went for the silver, you know, blend in with the aluminium here. Okay, let's see how we get on. Now they come with a base, and then there's like a bit of wiring uh, to hook all that up. There might even be a resistor in there, I can't quite remember, because the LEDs probably run a lot on a lot lower than 12 volts. And if the base is a bit awkward or not the right size, um, I'll see how they've bolted or mounted the gooseneck onto that base and maybe make a custom base that tidies up the electronics a bit because I need to bring a wire in. They assume the wire comes in from the back, but I don't want to do that. So, And also I've got to kind of dovetail or join two together, two into one. It too tight. So if we release this, that's obviously at full depth there. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit tight. All right, or well maybe I'll take the opportunity to reevaluate that. So I've got the cables plugged in. I've just temporarily cable tied those there. I think what I'm going to do is basically redo that area and integrate the control system for the lift as well in a panel here and the power supply and everything like that as well. Yeah, but we'll get to that in a bit. I think the first thing to do now is just see how much room we've got underneath the chuck down to the table. All right, so between the table, table and the bottom of the chuck, oh, let's do it like that. We're now about 260. And not easy to do, but say top of the vise to the chuck. Let's say 210, 220. Oh, let's say, yeah, about 210, which is a lot more than it was before. Obviously, we'll have a drill bit in there, but I can now drill much deeper parts yeah obviously i'd like as much as possible but without massively re-engineering the top part of the machine which um, yeah I'd basically start again if i did that that is now a lot better um i'll just do a comparison now of the space we've got here or the distance we got here so how it used to be um just a few videos ago when we before we stripped it down and we can see the comparison Right, after all those hours and hours and hours of work, modifying everything, cutting the table down, uh, stripping it down, rebuilding it, let's see if it was all worth it and will this motor lift the table? Here we go. The answer is yeah, but it's not happy. Let's go a bit slower. It's just about.
obviously very heavy. Well, I want to lift it up, so I want to change those bolts out. So it's going to go up one way or the other. A bit slower. All right, well, I'll nurse this to the top and they'll bring you back. And I think we'll try plan B. Okay, so this is only a low voltage power supply, and I've got to be careful because it is on, so those terminals are live. Uh, if I can just get in here and measure the DC bit, which is from there to there. Now, uh, currently 24. Okay, oh, that's turned right down then. Let's just turn that up. Just turn the little trim pot. About there, that's the maximum. Okay. Let's give that one more try. Now stepper motors is like voltage, that gives them lots more torque and lifting ability. So uh, this will go up to 50 volts. I don't want to run it completely at 50 volts, uh, maybe 45, 48, something like that. Uh, I mean, you're not going to get much back EMF, I wouldn't have thought from this. It's not going <laughs> to get much speed and not used that much. But anyway, here we go. So is that any better? Mm, not a lot better. Plan C. Mm. It's just we'll see another two volts is just helping it ever so slightly, but not really. All right, so I think we need a lot more voltage. So I'll order another power supply, that's no problem. Um, we'll see, I think they do a 48 volt, so that should give me a lot more power. And hopefully that will sort it out. And if it doesn't, um, then I think this was a, a lower torque unit, it was a smaller unit. Um, so normally, well, on a CNC machine, typically three newton meters, this is a bit lower, it might be 1.7 or two. So another option would be just swap it out with a three. I think it will fit, it's a little bit longer, but it should still fit and the bolt pattern will fit. So we've got options, but, I don't mind that. I think it's going to work. It's just a matter of getting these specs dialed in, and uh, yeah, then we'll have a nice, a nice lift. As mentioned before, you know, you could just put windscreen wiper motor on it, just go up and down. I really wanted to, the opportunity to play with lots of extra functions. Maybe do the can drill cycle on the knee. Uh, a whole load of things I've just got in mind as well. Just make it a bit more fun, a bit more interesting, really. Okay, I think that's it for this video. Um, yeah, there's been some ups and downs. I think this is going to work. I just need to get the specs right. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of flack in the comments. Just go and pick this massive motor. But um, as I said before, I really want the idea to be able to control it through software. That I can do things like can drill cycles, so move the knee up, um, do pec drilling to a given depth, counter bores, that kind of thing. You know, just had a bit more fun and flexibility to it. I'm uh, also quite looking forward to designing the control unit. So that I'll have a proper panel that I'll integrate with the DRO to make it look a little bit more continuous on the left side. I've got some thoughts on that, but we'll save that for a future video. I'm um, just trying to think if I've got a bigger power supply buried in my box. I've got a box of all sorts of bits of electronics. You know, when you build CNC machines, you gather these bits and pieces over the years. I've got a feeling I might have a bigger one somewhere. I'll have a route through that. Um, anyway, that's where we've got to. So pleased with the knee, pleased with the cropping off of that, very pleased with the extra distance. I forgot about the bellows, yeah, okay, so we need to order that. Yeah, so I think this is really, I feel like I've achieved a, a quite a nice milestone, although there's a bit more work to do. So uh, as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, hope you've enjoyed following along. Uh, if you're interested in this, feel free to subscribe. I think these days you have to click the bell if you want to be notified, uh, otherwise YouTube won't tell you when I next upload, so you yeah. know entirely up to you feel free to subscribe and follow along if you want by clicking that bell leave a comment it's quite nice especially i'm going to get a load of flack for you know not picking the right motor here but 
I have my reasons. I do want to be able to control it with software. I think that's a fun element that I want to add to it as well. All right. That being said, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>